Here, you either go or get run over. It's old school. Old school racing. Old school drivers. And old school beating and banging. But today, the new school wants to win in NASCAR's last great track. Who will win? And who will get run over? Marshallsville starts now. You go from the high banks of Daytona to the short track of Martinsville Speedway. After a rainy start to the day, we're about to get underway with race number two of the 2012 season. It's the Kroger 250 from Martinsville Speedway. Talked about rain this morning. Well, that has moved out of the way. It's overcast, 75 degrees and a light breeze. Perfect weather for racing and short track racing here in Southern Virginia. Hello everyone, Rick Allen, Phil Parsons, Michael Waltrip with you for the second race of the 2012 season. Now it's been five weeks since the last time we were on the racetrack. We go from the fastest racetrack to one of the smallest and shortest racetracks. It's got to be a difficult situation for a lot of drivers, but you've got John King who comes in here as the winner of the first race. He's got to be riding that momentum still. Well, he is, but he knows he comes here. It's a whole different animal at this racetrack. You've got to get down in the corner, stop, go the other direction. So different than Daytona. And we've got Kevin Harvick, who's won twice here, right. so good at this racetrack. You've got him in the field, as well as a bunch of former champions and Ron Hornaday, Tabo Nine. A great field of trucks, Michael. It seems like it gets better each year. At Daytona, he who is first would be last and vice versa. Right. They come and go. Here at Martinsville, track position is everything. Kevin Harvick starting on the front row. He's going to be hard to beat. Ty Dillon had a fast truck, too, right beside him. So we're going to have to play some pit strategy, Phil. Maybe only pit once, but if we're going to pit twice, we want to maybe pit a little bit before everyone else, try to grab that track position, and then hold on to it. Yeah, T Kevin Harvick told us during the, during the qualifying show that he feels like it's a two-stop race. He got that pole, so he got the best pit position. But as you mentioned, Michael, you may want a short pit and get your tires early, knowing that everyone else is going to come in 20 or 30 laps later. That's how you may be able to do the strategy. But we know this race is traditionally won from a top 10 starting spot. It's going to be tight, Rick. Well, Close quarters racing. Handling is so critical when you come to a short track. And when we were at Daytona, a lot of guys weren't talking about the handling there. They were talking about, okay, I can't bump draft. I can't do this. I can't do that. Here now, the communication between crew chief and driver is so critical. Yeah, and we're talking, we're, we're just going to adjust our truck by a, by a half pound of air here or there. Maybe one round of wedge. You come to pit road, and those are the things that the crew chiefs are going to be looking at. How do I make my adjustment as fast as I can? Because track position, again, so critical. How do I make that adjustment that my driver needs and not lose any spots on pit road? It's a thinking man's race today, especially up on top that pit box. You can make some decisions there that could literally propel you to victory. A lot of big decisions taking place on pit road. We've got two of the best on pit road and Hermie Sadler and Ray Dunlap, right? Well, thank you, Rick. You know, when this is a very small racetrack, as you guys talked about, the Sprint Cup cars, they're in the middle of the track. But when the Camping World trucks come in, they actually park right here on pit road. This is their garage area, and we pick our pits before the race ever begins and before qualifying all except for pit stall number one. NASCAR made a decision a couple of years back that there should be some value to winning the pole. And Kevin Harvick on the pole for the third time in his career. And guess what? Truck number two will be right here in pit stall number one. And that could play big dividends this afternoon. Hermie? Well, Ray, anytime the black number three comes to the racetrack, we all have high expectations of this truck, especially considering this truck won the championship last year with Austin Dillon behind the wheel. So when the three truck of Ty Lillen yesterday was right around the 20th place position in practice all day, we wondered what's wrong with the black number three. Well, today they proved nothing. A debrief session with crew chief and teammates and a few changes to this truck. And Ty Dillon knocked down the number two starting spot. So he's got the track position he needs to try to take this truck to victory lane. Rick. Thanks, Army. A year ago, it was his brother, Austin Dillon, who won the championship. And a year ago, to start off the season, it was Michael Waltrip who went to victory lane after Daytona. So who better to sit down with the Daytona winner from this year in the truck series than Michael Waltrip? He sat down with John King, and we'll listen in.
My favorite thing that happens is when the phone rings and someone says, now who was that that won that race again? <laughs> Everybody wants to know who John King is. Where'd you come from? <laughs> I came from uh, Northeast Tennessee, Southwest Virginia, off of uh, dirt lake models and lake model stocks on asphalt. Did you know that circumstances could lead you to be near the front at the end? I mean, anything can happen, especially at Daytona. Hell, I won uh, last year. <laughs> tell you anything. It was definitely in the thought process. Never in a million years would I have thought that I would have won. So, overtime in NASCAR, green-white checkers at Daytona, it's almost a guarantee. What was your thought process at that point? You had a good starting spot. I, I was on the inside, right directly behind Jason White, and uh, my thought process was stay on this yellow line, you know, stay in his tire tracks. To me, it's one of the best positions to be in. If, if we can get a run on him on the outside line and we come back around for the checkered flag, maybe I can get a run on him through, coming through the tribal and maybe win this race. Here we go again. Second attempt at a green-white checker. Coming to the white, a little bit of contact there with Johnny Sauter. I know that had to feel terrible as you watched him spin out of your way. Yes, sir. In my head, I thought, there's no way I'm going to push him through the tribal and through the corners. Only on the straightaways, on the front stretch, before and after the travel, and on the back stretch. But so the challenge is you want to be as close as you can be to him. Yes, sir. For speed, but you don't want to hit him. Do you think you got a push from behind that maybe got you a little closer than you're comfortable with? I think so. I had made it to his back bumper and rolled out of the throttle to stay off of him, and I just kept going. So I think that with help from behind, we had a little bit too good of a run on him, and and once I got to him, that was that was all I could do. Well, how do you put that behind you? You know, you've just run into the leader. As you sat there under the red flag, what were you thinking? I was pretty shaken after that, because, I, you know, that was the last thing I wanted to do. But the, the crew chief and spotter kind of calmed me down and said, hey, you're starting on, on pole again, so let's just, uh, let's just see how this plays out. This is our final attempt at a green-white checkered finish. When did you think I got it? Uh, he can't get me. I, I mean, not till not till we saw the start finish line. Caution is on the speedway, and that will mean John King will win uh, at Daytona. When the spotter said you've won this race, it was like, do what? <laughs> you talking to me? Yeah, that's. I said, are you sure? He said, I'm. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. You just won this race. <laughs> How many wins have you had over your career? Uh, this is win number three. Feature win, win number, three, number three. Right here. Holy cow, there's not another story like that. So you got three trophies now. That's it. Three That's trophies. Awesome. One of them's Daytona. One of them's Daytona. <laughs> what a huge accomplishment for young John King. His first Camping World Truck Series win happens at one of the biggest venues in this sport. And he was, he's so thankful. He loved that victory. It was so special to him. And man, Phil, he's had a month to bask yeah. in the glow of that victory. But, but don't you love the fact that in this series that we can have a story like John King? There's not another story like it. I mean, we haven't seen a guy come to Daytona with only two wins in his career. Feature and, wins. <laughs> yeah, let's make sure we clear that up. <laughs> a feature win is when you win the main event of the evening on a dirt track, usually, or a quarter mile asphalt he came to daytona with just two wins and won the biggest prize in nascar camping world truck series racing let's hear from him he's with hermy sadler well john king the guys in the booth were kind of making fun of the fact that you said your third feature win came at daytona that's a pretty big one to get for number three how about number four today i don't know uh you know we missed it in qualifying the rain kind of killed us a little bit and uh we were a little bit too free in qualifying but i think we got a really good truck just as soon as rubber gets laid down we're gonna be all right what kind of advice uh, not only have you got an experienced crew chief in Chad Kendrick, but also a couple teammates that know how to get around this place as well. What have they told you about what you need to do to get yourself in a good spot? Just be there at the end. You know, keep the fenders on it, uh, pick and choose my, my points, and, and uh, just get through everybody. Yeah, this guy's getting ready to try to bag up a big win at Daytona. Didn't get the qualifying run they wanted, Rick, but very confident that track position, they can get it before the end of the day. Thanks, Thanks Remy. And, and so much is a part of having momentum and confidence when you come to a racetrack opposite ends of the spectrum you leave daytona and you can forget everything that you saw at daytona and you come to martinsville the only thing they have in common is it gets really crowded they run in a big <laughs> pack at daytona and they're going to be in constant traffic here a lot of traffic maybe a little beating and banging stay with us the nascar camping world truck series on speed is brought to you by camping world and good sam everything for the rv lifestyle including rvs accessories warranties insurance and roadside assistance by auto stop the new auto stop is foolproof gray is over and by the 2012 ford f-150 built ford tough
gorgeous views. Spring has sprung here in Martinsville. Half mile racetrack, short track racing. Crowd starting to fill into the stadium here. You know, at Daytona, we, you know, we have nice blunt shots. Here we can have somebody, you know, stand on, on top of the garage here and get the whole racetrack in one in one shot. Yeah, great short track racing. And one of the other things that this affords us the opportunity to do is we had a camera crew and we listened in to Jeb Burton's first foray into the Camping World Truck Series. And we want you to follow along. Listen up. So help him out right now about what he's getting ready to go do. I'm going to the stand. Uh, take care of your truck. Go fast. They gave you a radio with no button on it. So. <laughs> Just be who you are. You got tons of freaking practice out here. All right? Chrome won't build the deck. All right? Be smart. Bro. 50s every lap. P3, P1 to 40. Still see you have the baby to throttle over here or not. You know, it's not launching quite as hard as it should. My biggest problem, Trip, is having wheel input coming off a corner. I'm having to keep on turning and making the rear come around. Four. All right, Trip, we're getting close. I mean, I like the way it is on the entry now. On the throttle, that made it a lot better but I need a lot more. We'll get close, I think. It's it looks better, your lap times are good there. And the tone of your voice sounds a lot better, buddy. Keep it up, buddy, keep it up. I think we would have had some for Ty on the second lap. I, I had him, I think I had him, and um, right in the middle I got free, and that carried over when I picked up the throttle. So good effort for the 27 truck, and um, hope we get him in a race. State Water Heater Chevrolet qualified seventh. Great run, Jeb. Has your week been what you expected? Yes, sir. It's uh, probably been a little bit more than my expectations, and um, hopefully we can come away with the top ten finish and impress State Water Heaters and go racing next week at Rockingham. That would be a great start, and, guys, he's got a special treat. He's got a dollar in his fire suit. He won his first race at Ace Speedway. He bought a hot dog, got that dollar back, and now he keeps it every week in his pocket. Some people have a lucky rabbit's foot. He's got a dollar. And that was a feature win, right? He's talking about. You'd get $3 back here <laughs> if you bought a hot dog. There's $2. How about the Burton family here at Martinsville? Well, actually, the accomplishments of, of what they've been able to do. Jeff Burton, 21 career wins. Ward Burton, his father, the Daytona 500 winner in 2002. And now Jeb Burton makes his first career Camping World Truck Series start. You know, and if I'm Jeff and Ward, I'm just going to tell Jeb, we gotta, we're going to take it easy today. You know, we're starting inside the top 10. Let's not ruffle any feathers. Let's just run 250 laps. Don't run into anybody or anything and just learn today. He has, he's going to have the tendency to want to overdo it because he's fast, Phil, and he's a young kid, and he's in his, he's in his backyard. He wants to show people what he's all about. We're going to have to try to Rain him in a little harness bit. that a little bit, yeah. hold him back. And he's still going through the resume process. Obviously, he's starting at a short track now. They will observe him during this race. He's going to go to Rockingham in two weeks after Easter. He'll run that race. They'll observe him there. And then, if everything goes well, he'll be approved to run at the mile-and-a-half racetracks, like Kansas, which would be the next stop. And that's what they want to do, is make sure that they make it of him available for those races. We look at our Royal Purple race analysis. As you can see, 36 trucks, 250 laps around this, just a little over half mile racetrack you see our pit window around 130 to 140 laps most of the guys think it's going to be with this tire michael a two-stop race right they might stop around lap 90 maybe lap 180 or so and then be set to go to the finish or or, or maybe like you said in the in the opening field short pit this deal a little bit get some track position and then try to hold on to it this historic racetrack as we look at the numbers and the camping world track description amazing i love I it i don't know that i've ever seen it. any part of any racetrack with zero degrees and let me ask you this question how simple does that look anybody could do it right <laughs> this is one of the hardest places we're going to race all year go extremely fast on the straightaways and then slam on the brakes and turn left it's time to start the engines. We go Race for the fans, command. fans, please welcome key account manager for Pepsi Cola, Spencer Brissett, as he delivers the most famous words in motorsports. Drivers, start your engines.
36 trucks come to life. About ready to take on Martinsville Speedway for 250 laps. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. Welcome back. Kroger 250 about to get underway. Trucks are rolling off of Pitt Road. The engines have been fired. Everyone pulling out onto the half-mile paper clip. They will get their tires warmed up, brakes warmed up before the green flag flies. Take a look at how they will start this race. Kevin Harvick wins the pole, his third career pole. Ty Dillon will start on his outside, or inside in this case. He chooses the outside. Got a former winner back in row number two, Timothy Peters, along with Kale Gale. Justin Lofton continues to be strong. Into the year last year, running well, and picked that right back up again this year. That's good to see. There's Jeff Burton who's going to have to go to the rear, and Johnny Sauter, our winner in this race last year. Impressive qualifying effort for Jeff Agnew. He starts on the outside of row five. Matt Crafton, a lot of testing. He thinks he's got a fast truck. Jason Leffler just happy to be here. Didn't know he's coming. Top Odine has that look in his eye. We talked about it. We showed it during qualifying. He, he could be a threat. I love it. Todd's going to be the man today. Paulie Haraka will start on the outside of row number nine. Brendan Newberry getting a start, strong during practice. J.R. Fitzpatrick Patrick from Canada coming down to Martinsville to race. We'll reiterate the fact that 21 of the 26 races have been won after starting in the top 10 starting positions. So that bodes a little bit more difficult for the drivers back here in the back of this field. Yeah, David Starr's won here before though, Phil. Sure has, he knows how to get it done here. John West Townley returning to the truck series. Here's our Daytona winner, John King, back in row number 16. He was back that far at Daytona at one point or another. He's probably thinking, this won't be no big deal. <laughs> and the final row, Chris Cockrum and Dakota Armstrong making up that final row. You talk about inside the top 10. Listen to the three trucks just outside of the top 10 in the starting lineup. Crafton, Leffler, and Bodine. All three of those trucks could easily, or not easily, they could fight their way to the win here, but uh, going to have to do it from outside the top 10. And like you said, Rick, that hasn't been done very often. You're getting a report that Jeb Burton is not going to have to go to the back, so he okay. will maintain his seventh place starting spot. That would have been kind of crazy to watch yeah, with a wow. fast truck and a rookie from the back. Would have been tough. We've got a few cameras that will ride along on the paper clip. Michael. Yeah, this is Joey Coulter. He's starting 21st. Has had a good truck all day yesterday. Was disappointed in his qualifying run. Sponsored by Stakeums. That sounds, that sounds like Martinsville to me. How about we're going to ride along with Paula Hirock and the MC10 Ford. Paula will start from the 18th spot. Just about to graduate from Duke University. This is the captain almost won the championship last year. Johnny Sauter He's going to roll from the 8th starting spot in the Hot Honey Curb Records Toyota. You think this next guy knows his way around here? Four-time champion. Champion Ron Hornaday in the AM FM Energy Chevy. He will start from the fifth spot. And the 17 of Timothy Peters also carrying one of our cameras. He won at this racetrack back in 2009. Very close to his hometown, so he considers Martinsville his home track. You might wonder, you know the inside is the premier lane. That's where you want to be on this start. So you would say, why is Kevin Harvick on the outside? You can't run the outside here. What's going to happen when they get down to turn one? Ty Dillon will let off the gas. Kevin Harvick will grab the bottom. That'll put Ty Dillon on the bottom. He doesn't have to f worry about fighting his way down there. So this is a little home cooking here for these two. Harvick's going to say, let me have the first turn. And you'll be in second. And you'll be happy. It helps when your teammates, too. That's right. This is this is a great plan, and you're going to watch it play out when they get to turn Come one. Come to fruition. Unless Ty forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think he's, he he's, he's pretty savvy. He won that ARCA Racing Series championship last year. Yeah. He's not going to forget. He's won about as many races as he lost, hasn't he? I mean, he's got a really good batting average. I went 0 for 462 once. This is a racetrack where if you get hung out on the outside, you can get shuffled back 10 to 12 spots. We'll see what happens as we're about ready to start the second race of the 2012 season. Coming out of turn number four, Kevin Harvick leading the field to the green flag. It worked out just exactly like you said, Michael. Almost like it was planned. And now Kale Gill will try to slide just in front of Timothy Peters. So it's Kevin Harvick, Ty Dillon, Kale Gale, and Timothy Peters, your top four as they go through three and four. Yeah, these guys are going to be fighting for spots here on the bottom. They want to get down to the bottom. They don't want to get shoveled back, Rick, like you were talking about. And right now on the outside, Justin Lofton in the six is starting to get shuffled back. He'll try to find a spot right in front of that 13 of Johnny Sauter. He slips in line. And now Timothy Peters tries to make the pass on Kale Gale. Kale slipped up off turn two. It gave Peters a shot to the inside. He took it. And he's going to bring some of his buddies with him. Hornaday to the inside. Side by side for that fourth spot. Hornaday 
on the inside. Kale Gill on the outside. He could shuffle back another position. I think he's going to catch a break. That's Justin Lofton, Kale Gill's teammate in the six truck. And he's going to let him in. We haven't talked a lot about the fact that there is a curb at this racetrack. It sticks up. You can get shot into the outside line if you try to cut the corner a little bit. And so far, we haven't seen that. We hope we don't see it this evening. Great side-by-side -side racing. James Bush in the 31 truck gets by Jeb Burton. He's going to bring a friend with him, Matt Crafton in the 88, as Justin Lofton tries to get by Kale Gale. You are going to see it this evening, Rick. <laughs> Someone will hit that curb and hit another truck. These guys battle each other hard here. See, Kevin Harvick looked like rolled over and let Ty Dillon grab the lead. Now, I'm not so sure Kevin thinks Ty needs to get a point for leading a lap for this championship battle, or if Kevin just said, it's a little early for me to be driving my truck so hard, so have at it, Ty. We'll know the answer to that in about a lap if the, the three pulls over and gets out of Harvick's way. And right now, the two of Kevin Harvick on the back bumper of that three here, a side-by-side -side battle continuing. On the inside, James Bush, or on the outside, Kale Gale, and look at that. He pulled over and let him go. Yeah, pulled over to the inside and let Kev have it go. There's that l one point for leading. Could loom large when we get towards the end of the year. The Cup guys tied in points last year. You know, after the season was <laughs> over, Tony right. Stewart and Carl Edwards had the same amount of points. If he hadn't had a teammate let him lead one lap somewhere during the course of the season, Carl would have been your champion. Or somewhere during the course of the chase, Carl would have been your champion. Jockeying for positions early on. There's Todd Bodine in the 11 trying to get by Agnew in the 70. He's going to be able to make that pass on the bottom of the racetrack. I tell you, I really like the way that 11 truck of Todd Bodine looked all throughout both practices yesterday, as well as the look in his eye. You saw Michael. Oh, he looks a little bit loose off the turn there, but I'm with you, Phil. Todd was very energetic and very enthused about being in Martinsville and trying to put that streak of never winning on a small track behind him but that thing's loose you can see Agnew gets a run down on the bottom here slid through the middle of the corner there that opened up the bottom for just a moment for Jeff Agnew slipping sideways again off he's gonna have to tidy you know, that up a little bit might either need to tighten it up or, or sometimes as the air pressures come up on the trucks the handling will change but right now he's had his hands full fuel burning off as well as you, you burn some of that weight off of the the back of these trucks and as the rubber builds up they historically talk about this racetrack getting tighter especially through the center of the corner and then the early exit yeah and this track doesn't have any rubber on it it rained all night last night and now we've got had just some trucks and cars qualifying but this is the most rubber that's been down on it all day even just this short of a time into the race you see the difference between one and two now Kevin Harvick in that two truck just in front of Ty Dillon in the three and that's the differential now after about three or four laps that have been run hard by Kevin Harvick at the beginning of this race we saw Harvick move over Ty Dillon led a lap Harvick goes right back to the front and he continues to lead at Martinsville Kevin Harvick beginning to lap the slower traffic now working his way by Jake Crum in the 07 Harvick with a very strong race truck not only yesterday in practice qualifying grabs the pole and now showing us just how strong that truck is early on in this race tight battle back here for the six spot Johnny saw to the 13 has six there's James Bush with the 31 and Matt Crafton in the 88 remember oh, we've got to spin on the front. round goes run for today in the nine hi, hi, hi. that may have he may have had some help Justin Lofton the six truck was right behind him he had a lot of help on the end of the spin. I don't know if maybe he got sideways first, but definitely lofted into the back of Hornaday. Hornaday was running in the fourth spot when he came out of turn number four, and around he goes. Don't see a great deal of damage. There's look like Justin maybe had made the move to the inside, Michael. And yeah, they, you, they, they made contact right down there in the center of turn number four. You make the commitment to the low side. You see, he got sideways and actually had, had opened up the bottom of the racetrack, got a little bit sideways, took up some more room, and Justin was there. I knew what finished the spin. I wasn't sure what started it, Phil. Yeah. <laughs> so the four-time champion around at Martinsville. Harvick still out front. Welcome up. Welcome back. They are going two by two. Getting ready for the restart, we had a caution coming out as Hornaday got sideways, and we listened in to the six of Justin Lofton. Here's what he had to say during the incident. Come on, come on, six, 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 cautions out, cautions out. One year fault, that was his. Yeah, I didn't touch him there. He was trying to wreck anyway. 
And the green flag comes out once again. Harvick on the outside will take the top spot once again in front of Ty Dillon. Now a good run by that six of Justin Lofton working the outside. It's so hard to accelerate up off the bottom of the corner like Austin or Ty Dillon had to do there when another truck's right beside you. You can see Ty went into the corner there, sort of went straight, Bill, when he got to the turn, got him an angle off the corner and accelerated straight up off. And Justin knew that, that, that Ty was going to back off and let Kevin Harvick in, and he had designs of maybe closing that hole up as well. Now he's going backwards. Two by two, they stay. Johnny Sauter on the inside of James Busher. Crafton, his teammate just behind Sauter. Looked like Sauter might have bounced off the curb there. Did a nice job staying off of James Busher. Lofton still trying to find a spot to move into. He finds one behind the 88 of Matt Crafton. So Hornaday does come to Pitt Road. And did they make some adjustments to that truck? Yeah, they did, Rick. It came down Pitt Road. They did not change tires because Hornaday said he did not flat spot them. He agreed with uh, what we saw on TV was not contact with the six truck. He was starting to get loose in the center of the corner. So they came in, dropped the track bar, topped off with fuel, got him back on the racetrack. Absorbing. A little contact early in this one, right? Trying to make his way. You see a little bit of us. David Rudeman. You see a little dent in the back bumper of that 92 truck right in front of Ron Hornaday. There's Joey Coulter, the 22. He's going to try to get by that 39 truck of Sieg as well. Try to bring Jason White with him as well. As you can see, White there battling with the 70 of Jeff Agnew. He makes that move. There's James, racing everywhere, Phil. James Bush is doing a nice job hanging in on the outside there, but look how much ground they're losing to the top three while they're doing that. Yeah, they're battling for fourth, and you see the top three have almost a straightaway between them and that battle for fourth. Now we're going to go three wide for that spot. <laughs> <laughs> Can you go three wide at Martinsville? For a minute. Yeah. Or a second till you get to the corner anyway. So Busher wins that battle. He's out in front of Johnny Sauter now for the fourth spot. Sauter back into fifth and his teammate Matt Crafton right behind him in sixth. I'd circle that move right there by Busher staying on the outside gaining that spot away from Johnny Sauter keeping that fourth position. You remember what happened here last fall in the cup race. Tony Stewart made a move on the high side to stay on the lead lap. Then he used that same move on the high side to win the race at the end against Jimmy Johnson. So these guys are learning things now that can pay dividends later and how did how did Tony end up in points like you were talking about earlier it, it all worked out I think that started a streak of he's won seven of the last 15, 15 races yeah, yeah. not As bad. Russell stares at me with a blank look on his face <laughs> my he, gave you, he gave you the thumbs up you're, the thumbs. you're dead on with those stats I just have been very impressed with when guys learn something like Tony did that day maybe James just saw something there that he can use later in this race too and he may have watched Tony do that too making it work here at Martinsville Riding along with Timothy Peters just in front of him. It's the young Ty Dillon in that number three. Ty Dillon in practice yesterday, not good. Struggle. <laughs> Tried to figure out exactly how to make that truck faster. Kevin Harvick jumped into that truck late in the second practice, was able to put some laps on it, gave some feedback. Ty Dillon goes out, has a great qualifying effort, starts second, and now battling in the top five. Michael, you see the little yellow block there? That's the RPMs. You see about 8,700 down to 4,500 RPMs in the center of the corner here. You know, Ray, if I was off Ty Dillon, darn it, Austin won the championship, that's Ty's brother. If I was Ty, I might let Timothy Peters go right now. He's all over the back of him. There's a big gap behind Ty. Maybe he could learn what his truck has. Are they saying anything about that down there in the pit? And, Michael, the problem is that three truck is loose coming off right now, and he said he's really got a handful turning sideways when he comes off the corner. But I thought it was interesting listening to their radio yesterday, and they do make that swap. Peters goes ahead of Ty Dillon. But yesterday, Ty said he really liked the way the truck was handling. He thought it felt good. It was just slow. But whatever changes they made to it last night, it sure came to life this morning in qualifying. Straight heads up moving. You know that Ty Dillon has a lot of experience working with him up on top at Spotter Stand Down. You got Scott Nassett as his crew chief, as well as his dad, Mike Dillon, and, and Pop Pop, Richard Childress. And that was, they saw exactly what you were seeing. No sense racing that hard early. Go ahead and let Timothy go. See if you can work your truck out a little bit. Maybe find, a, alter your line just a little bit. There's not a whole lot you can do here, but maybe you can do a little bit here and make it better. Yeah, that white truck you see up ahead, that's Ron Hornaday. He's in a different agenda right now than Ty Dillon. Ty is up front. 
not. He just needs to study his truck, focus on his truck, and be patient, be calm. Ryan's got to charge a little bit, but he just made his way inside the top 15. After that spin, he had to bring out our first caution. He's got to go for a bit here. Use that truck up for all it's worth right now to gain some track position and then take a deep breath like Ty Dillon did by letting Timothy Peters go. When we come to short tracks, the word rhythm comes up a lot. You get into a rhythm. The problem with getting into that rhythm at a racetrack is there's 35 other trucks out there that can break up that rhythm. Yeah, darn it. I mean, they, and they're in your way, and they want to be where you are. And I don't know if uh, I don't have the best record here at Martinsville, and you ought to see me try to dance. I mean, I, I have no rhythm, and I couldn't get it all timed out here like I needed to. Right now, the best rhythm is the engine by Kevin Harvick. Sounding very good and looking good for that two out in front. Harvick has almost a three second lead over second place Timothy Peters. Saw a little bit of heat track. on that front brake rotor. As, as easy as he's running here to drive away, still a little bit of brake heat. Today, round two of the Rolex Sports Car Series rides into Alabama. Find out if the Michael Shank boys can take two in a row. That's the Rolex Sports Cars Series. Birmingham, that's today, right after the truck race here on Speed. We're great men on the 24 hours of Daytona, the Rolex 24 for what? Shank Racing. Actually, two cars on the podium. Michael McDowell, who will be racing tomorrow, was in one of those cars, and uh, A.J. Allmendinger was actually in the winning car. Yeah. And what about that battle late in the race that A.J. Allmendinger had with Alan McNish? They were bumping yeah. doors up on the high banks at Daytona <laughs> and racing for the win in a 24-hour race. 24-hour race, and I think first and second were separated by five seconds. What, four cars in the lead left? Yeah, 24-hour race, and the, the top two are separated by five seconds. Very impressive, so you want to stay tuned for that. Here we have Kevin Harvick out in front. He has been the dominant truck. He was very gracious and allowed Ty Dillon to lead a lap, then took over the top spot and now has a four and a half second lead over second place Timothy Peters. Ty Dillon's dropped back to third, James Busher fourth, and Johnny Sauter in your top five. Yeah, we saw Busher and Sauter battle for that fourth spot, and darn, they've been battling ever since. Busher got the spot, but Sauter's been able to keep right up with him. Army, what's the uh, going on with Matt Crafton's truck? Well, Michael, right now he's running in the sixth position on the racetrack, but they're a little bit concerned about the engine under the hood of this Toyota. The tachometer inside of the truck, according to Matt Crafton, is going crazy, bouncing back between five and 9,000 RPM. Concerned about maybe a battery issue or another electrical issue. They just ask him to switch ignition boxes to see if that clean, clears it up. Right now he's running decent lap times, but a little bit of concern. Moment on the back stretch here, David Rudum in the 92 truck. Not sure exactly what happened. There's Dusty Davis, the 15, Max Gresham in the 24, and there's John King in the 7. Looked like maybe there's the, there's the moment right there. Yeah, Jason White moved David out of the way, spun him out, and then straightened him back up. So I guess David might have to think they're even because he <laughs> spun him out and then he yeah. fixed it for him. I, I'm, I'm willing to bet David yeah. doesn't think they're even. You don't, you don't think that's where he's <laughs> at right now? I don't think <laughs> even is what he's thinking right now. Maybe get even. He's thinking something, but. <laughs> Remember how important it is to keep the fenders and the brake ducts on these trucks. I think Jason's going to have a little bit of damage to that right front corner of his truck. And the reason why Jason decided to finally move, David, is because look who's coming. Kevin Harvick had caught the back of those guys. Jason Spotter obviously told him, felt like David was holding him up a little bit and gave him a shot in the rear end. And that's uh, that caused David almost to have a wreck. Rudman currently running 25th, so 26. John West Townley is now a lap down as Harvick has really set a blistering pace once the green flag came back out after our first caution. There he goes around, Rudeman. We're getting in that window. Now we're uh, rapidly approaching 60 laps. I think now if we see a caution anytime soon, you know, they may bring bring most of the field to pit road for that first pit stop and put tires on. Michael, what do you think? Well, yeah, I think you're right, Phil, and you're, you're liable to see a caution now because of what just happened. Harvick got to the back of that group of trucks that were fighting to stay on the lead lap. People get impatient and run into each other. The next victims are John King and Dusty Davis, Max Gresham. They start holding each other up. They'll knock each other out of the way. Brian Silas ran a little bit higher line. That allowed the five of Polly Haraka to shove the nose of that truck in and take the position away. Again, Johnny Sauter running fifth, James Busher fourth. That's the gap between those two trucks. Jeb Burton goes way high down in one and two. 
Looks like he still he stays on the racetrack. May just overshot the corner a little bit. Problem is when you go when you get out of the groove, then you get a lot of rubber buildup on your tires, and it takes a couple laps to get the tires cleaned off. Yeah, and he just had he had a lot of space of his own, and now that all, that's all gone. So that was a mistake that Jeb made. See if he can overcome it. Ray, it looks as though Kevin Harvick is out there on a Sunday drive. Does he have the uh, the radio playing music in that truck? Uh, it's just a Saturday drive today, Rick, but I'll tell you what, he is a bit concerned. Just came on the radio and said, I smell rear end gear and it's burning. Said, I don't know if it's in our truck or somebody in front of us here. I'll try to update you, but definitely a smell of burning rear end. And that's going to be a problem for one of those trucks. We don't know if it's the two or not for sure yet. It's the 15, Ray. Yeah, a little smoke coming see. out from the 15. Dusty Davis up ahead. There's the smoke, and that's what Harvick is smelling. As a matter of fact, if you have somebody losing a gear at this racetrack, we'll smell it up here in the TV booth. <laughs> Everybody here will be able yeah. to smell that. He sees that smoke, and I guarantee he feels a little bit better right now other than he might be getting some grease on his windshield, but he knows now where that smell is coming from, and it's not coming from him. Well, the one thing he wants to do is get by that 15. So if there is grease or some type of fluid being put down on the racetrack, he doesn't get in it and inadvertently get into the wall. Still continue to see a little bit of smoke coming out from behind that 15. Running at a pretty good pace is Dusty Davis. Kevin makes a move to the inside. Now Dusty moves over, gives him room. Harvick continues to lead Timothy Peters, Ty Dillon, James Busher, and Johnny Sauter, your top five. Eight and a half seconds, the difference between Harvick and Peters as you take a look at the paper cliff here at Martinsville, Martinsville, Virginia. Rick, you mentioned the tachometer they did down in the pits, the guys in the pits did going crazy on the 88. That usually means a dead battery possibly, Phil, and it yeah. looks like that's the case. Watch at, watch his tack. Yeah, look at the telemetry. It's, it is out of whack, and it doesn't look like the truck has the end of the straightaway speed that it had at the start. You see him do fine in the corner, but watch. He's going to pull over because it looks like he, he definitely, I would say, has a cylinder gone. Again, he's fine through the corner here, and initially when he gets on the throttle, but right about now is when that thing starts losing power. I'm just wondering if it has enough battery to run the ignition when he tries to go up to the higher RPMs. Maybe the thing's just barely running right now, but uh, it's not It's not going fix, to fix itself, and he needs a caution pretty desperately. Look, looks like we might have one. The 22 truck of Joey Coulter into the outside wall in turn three. Yellow, yellow, yellow's out. The 22's in the fence over here, three or four. You mentioned it. Right front tire looks like maybe for Joey Coulter. It's not turning right now. Yeah, a lot of damage a, to the right front of that truck. Big break for several trucks. Our leader, Kevin Harvick, had gotten right on the bumper of Jason White. Uh, Max Gresham and those guys were all battling to stay on the lead lap. Oh, Matt Crafton's engine going crazy. Yeah, like you say, you know, it may not, the battery may not even be strong enough to run our telemetry. Right. It's not strong enough to run his tack. I think if they can maybe swap batteries, he'll be okay. Very opportune. Caution flag for Matt Crafton. Joey Coulter was running 14, or excuse me, 20 seconds, or 19. Joey Coulter was 19. Matt Crafton was running six when he had the issues. Coming onto pit road, he's going to pass on the outside. Yeah, pit road is actually closed, but Matt Crafton knows that he needs all the time he can get. He knows he will have to restart from the tail of the longest line. If they go right to the left rear, the that's middle, the battery's low. Slow down your but right before the center. Ooh. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Sounds like Mike Dillon. Yeah. Ty's dad spot for Joey, and obviously no, had nothing Joey could do about it when they got down to the center of the corner. Right to the left rear corner of that truck, Phil. That's where the battery's located. If they could get that baby changed and keep him on the lead lap, that'd be quite an accomplishment. He loses ones, he can get a Aaron's lucky dog and still be in the race. Yeah, he's definitely going to lose one. Pit, the pace truck is going by right now. Green Don't flag for pit stops. We go down to Hermie. Well, Rick, James Busher is really happy with his track position, not as happy with his truck. He's fighting tight through the center of the corner and no forward bite. It's going to be four tires and air pressure adjustment for James Busher. Ray? Hermie, down on my end, I'm a bit surprised to hear how many people are loose. Typically, you have a really tight race truck in the corner here. 
Harvick a little bit loose. The 17 of Peters is loose, and also the three of Ty Dillon. You see the track bar adjustment there on the tied Silverado. That'll help tighten him up a little bit. Left side tires go on. Harvick got that number one pit stall. They drop him down, and easily he'll be the first guy off the of pit road here. Coming around next, that is Matt Crafton, who obviously had some work. The three will go. 31 is going to beat out the 17. Great pit stop by Ty Dillon's team. Grab that spot. Kevin Harvick holds serve. Comes in as the leader, leaves as the leader. Looks like Timothy Peters going to drop a couple spots. Jeff Burton moves up the most spots, five positions. And the 88 back on pit road, Hermie. Yeah, this is the second time they've been being Rick. Last time they came to pit road, it was just to change the battery. Then they're coming back in to get their tires. They wanted to get on the first stop. They are hopeful. Right side tires on it. They were hopeful that this will help them get to the end of the race. So I'm hearing a mistake by Polly Haraka, rookie driver, who uh, missed the commitment line on one end to the other, and he'll have to restart at the rear of the field. So our first pit stops taking place at Martinsville, and we come back to green flag. Good things continue to happen for John King, even though he was a lap down. Aaron's is going to give him a lap back. He's our Aaron's lucky dog, so he'll get a lap back before the green flag about to come back out. Field coming out of turn four. Flag back in the air. Once again, Ty Dillon backs off so Kevin Harvick can have that line getting down in the corner. Great teamwork by two teammates. Yeah, and so smart, too, because Ty Dillon is then assured he's going to be able to hang on to that second spot, which if you start on the outside, you never know where you're going to find a spot to slide into. See Timothy Peters settles in in third, and here we go with that side-by-side -side battle again with James Busher and Johnny Sauter. This time, James is on the inside, though. <laughs> Busher's going to grab the spot. Whoa. So James, or Justin Lofton's going to slow just enough for Johnny Sauter to get in there. And you could see that Justin Lofton thought he was going to grab that spot away from Sauter, <laughs> and he almost was in there too far to back up. There was three wide. Ron Hornaday making the pass on the outside. Going by Dusty Davis, as well as that 0-8 of Ross Chastain. Dusty has the outside line pretty much clogged up there. These guys are battling with some lap trucks and guys on the lead lap. There's John King, got a lap back courtesy of Aarons and Jason White, who's been battling to stay on the lead lap. Leader's been up to his tailgate a couple of times. He's been able to stay on the lead lap, though. Matt Crafton only lost one lap with that battery change, so he now just needs to stay in line here, work his way towards the front of the lap down trucks to be in position for that next Aarons lucky dog. Single file line as they work their way into turn number one. Still, it's Harvick out in front of Ty Dillon, Timothy Peters, James Busher, and Johnny Sauter, your top five. Justin Lawton, Kale Gill, Parker Kligerman, Todd Bodine, and Jason Leffler in the 18. Hadn't heard much out of Leffler. He's hanging in there, making an adjustment or two to that truck. That team obviously knows how to win here, and Leffler's a fast driver, so he could become a player in this baby. Hornaday's moved up to the 13th spot, Hermie. Yeah, Rick, but Dan, they have some of the same concerns that Matt Crafton has had. Ron Hornaday pointing out to his crew chief, Jeff Hensley, that the voltage on his gauges on the dash are showing zero, and he's losing top end in the engine. They are preparing to also come down pit road and possibly change a battery. Now, that's what happens. The uh, battery isn't charged enough, to, charged enough to make the ignition fire when they try to turn it up 9,000 RPMs. Thing starts to die on you. Matt Crafton was able to survive to get to a caution, change his battery, see if one of these is fortunate. It's amazing how much voltage that these ignition systems need to operate at, the, at their full potential. Right now, we see Matt Crafton. The only problem with Matt Crafton's is, is it's something that's drawing the battery down, and he's going to have that problem with another battery. Yeah, because he didn't. Didn't quite run far enough to make it to to make it again on another battery if, if it is something that's a, a miss. Those of, those of us that tinker with cars, there's an alternator on here. So is it an alternator issue? Well, well very possibly, very possibly the alternator not charging, and that's what's drawing the battery down. But the team's smart enough to figure out if that's the case, they'll turn off some of the fans that cool the brakes or cool the gear, and try to alternate between using the fans and not using them to keep uh, keep going. They're going to turn the driver's fan off first. That's uh, the first thing they're going to get rid of. I don't want to hear anything out of him. <laughs> the 22. Joey Coulter had a right front tire go down, got into the wall. That brought out our second caution. How's that team doing now, Ray? 
Well, a flat tire for Joey Coulter, and as they pulled it off the track, it was pretty simple to see here that they had melted the bead on the inside. Excessive brake heat certainly did that, so no question about it as we saw Wait about here. And the yellow is back out here at Martinsville. Yeah, Fitzpatrick around in the 60, so that brings out the third caution. Left, looks like the left rear tire is certainly low. Don't know if it's flat or not. Oh, and Jeff Agnew, huge damage to the front of that truck. Been a rough day for Agnew. Yeah, wow. See what happens here. You see a little bit of contact right here between John West Townley and the 09. He gets a little bit loose, and then he moves up into the 60. And that's his chain reaction. You see Dakota Armstrong with a lot of damage right. as well in the 98 truck. Watch the chain reaction now. That was a case too, Phil. You talk about that curb. I think John West caught a bit of the curb, tossed him sideways, and into Fitzpatrick. He looked right there against the edge of the curb, maybe yeah. up he, the hill. He tries to stay off, but he got a little bit loose. And when he got loose, he had to chase the truck up the hill. And that's when he made contact with Fitzpatrick. And you can see behind him, there's Dakota Armstrong into the back of Greenfield, and a lot of impact on the front of that Clarence's Steakhouse truck of Jeff Agnew. Clarence Steakhouse just up the road from here. Martinsville will be back. Tomorrow NASCAR race day is live from Martinsville. We'll tell you if Dale Jr. can straighten out the paper clip and end his winless streak. Plus Biffle Harvick and Hamlin join us live. NASCAR race day fueled by Sunoco from Martinsville tomorrow. 1030 Eastern live on speed. Don't you know Denny Hamlin smiles a little bit bigger every time they come to Martinsville. Yeah, but I'm having problems. Is this, is this Hamlinville or is this Johnsonville or is this Harvickville? <laughs> where, where, where are we at? Well, Harvick, Herm Hermieville, yeah. isn't it? You think it's Hermieville? Yeah. Hermie, isn't this your your joint? Now, I'm a long way from Hermieville, but I tell you what, <laughs> this nine truck, they came in and changed the battery for Ron Hornaday. Crew Chief Jeff Hensley is telling the crew to get another battery charged and ready because they're not sure this will be the last time they'll have to change a battery. Also, another battery issue, believe it or not, for the five truck of Pauli Haraka. He is starting to lose bolts, and they've asked him to cut all his brake fans and hoses off as well. So, a lot of issues with batteries today. Got to figure out what the cause of it is. Could ruin good finishes for some of these teams. You have to figure those are alternator issues. Yeah, you would think. And maybe it's just too much, too many fans cooling the, 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 the brakes and the tires and the driver on this hot day. And... Um, it's, it's burning up the alternators. It's the only thing I can figure. Yes. Batteries aren't going to go bad. Yeah, they believe. have several brake fans as well as bead blower fan. You, we talked about uh, about Joey Coulter melting the bead. They actually have fans that will blow air on the bead on the beads of the tires. And unfortunately, that wasn't enough for Joey Coulter in this situation. And there's a lot of crew chiefs for the Cup race tomorrow that are thinking, is this just an isolated issue, or do we need to look at how we're cooling our brakes and and uh, beads on our tires? A lot of folks watch these races closely that race tomorrow to see if there's any tire issues, what the issues indeed are. And a lot of the crew chiefs, cup crew chiefs that are, will be working tomorrow will be walking up and down pit road looking for those very things. You use the word issues. One driver who has had them. We look at our Ram guts and glory and Ron Hornaday. Issues early for him, bringing out our first caution as he went around coming out of turn four. Able to get back going, made a lot of nice moves to get back up into the top 15. Here he is racing with David Rudiman on the back bumper of Miguel Paluto right there. But now he has an issue. He's a lap down, Michael. And Rick? You definitely have to have guts and glory when you race at Martinsville. And Hornaday wanting to battle back, potentially get back on that lead lap, but he'll have to work for it. Harvick and Dillon bringing the field back to the green flag. It's back in the air. We're back underway. Harvick has been the dominant truck today since the drop of the green flag. He allowed Dillon to lead a lap, but then took over the top spot once again. Peters, James Busher, Sauter, all in the top five. They've ran well up to this point as we're closing in on and right at 100 laps of racing. Just over it now. Jeff Burton come real sideways coming off turn number four. Does a nice job of saving that truck. John King goes way high. Gets up in the marbles and the loose stuff. I love these several restarts. Spots. <laughs> we can't show every bit of the action that takes place, but the restarts are wild. These guys are all over each other. You got so many different agendas. Right now, Ron Hornaday and Matt Crafty. You see Matt on the bottom of the track coming down the front straightaway. That's how close they are battling for that Aaron's lucky dog. Other guys wanting to get track position to try to set themselves up to battle for the finish. And Hornaday and Crafton are just 
fighting to try to get back on the lead lap. Currently 20 trucks on the lead lap. Devin Harvick continues to set the pace out front. Ty Dillon, Timothy Peters, James Busher, and Johnny Sauter, your top five. Then Lofton, Gale, Bodine, Kligerman, and Leffler, your top ten. There's David Starr makes the move to the inside of Jeb Burton. Starr back there in 14th. Takes that position away. That's 13th for David Starr. And Nelson P.K. Jr. to the inside of Jeb Burton. You know what else is fun to watch is how much harder these guys start to dive in the corners on each other as every lap ticks by. You know, this is a sprint race, just a couple hundred fifty laps. You got to get all you can get, but they're pretty respectful the first 40 or 50 laps. But when there's a restart and you're buried back in 15th to 20th, you're going to grab everything you can. We saw the very start of the race where sometimes it was teammates letting other teammates in, other drivers letting other drivers in. As you mentioned, Michael, the closer we get to the 200 lap mark, there'll be none of that. And that's happening right now. It's, it's already beginning because these guys know they've got to get track position if they're going to win this race. There was contact right there. David Starr in the 81 got in the back of the 08 and, and moved him up off the bottom of the racetrack coming off turn number two and took over that spot. Hornaday being pushed down to the bottom of the racetrack by that 27 of Jeb Burton. We'll see if that sits well with the four-time champion. Well, I can answer that for you. It won't. Yeah. And, and believe me, that... Ron Hornaday in that nine truck knows that that 88 is a truck he's looking for right now. He needs to be in front of that 88 truck when the caution flag comes out. Watch the tachometer on Matt Crafton. Remember, we saw it going crazy before they changed the battery. Now it looks like it's supposed to, down to about 4,500, up to 8,500. But again, we still have 100 and almost 143 laps left, Michael. A little bumping there between Hornaday and Crafton. Crafton on the receiving end. Hornaday being a little bit too giving. Well, I think Ron thought he might be got to get a swing into the first turn on the high side and be able to get a better run off turn two on Matt and make that pass. They're running there with Ross Chastain, who's on the lead lap in the watermelon truck running in the 14th spot. So another great job by Ross. But right now, Crafton knows he's got to go. He's got to get some trucks between he and Hornaday because Ron's fast as well. And Ron will not be patient back there. Nope. He knows what's at stake for that one position on the racetrack. And Ron Hornaday knows how to win at this racetrack. He knows you need to be up on the wheel and get up front as quickly as you can because there's guys like Kevin Harvick that he's going to have to spend a lot of time working against if he wants to take that spot away. And speaking of taking spots away, Busher was able to jump up in front of Dylan. Now the move back, Dylan's able to hold on to that spot. Peters. Holding on to third, Busher, and now we see Dusty Davis in the 15 stopped on the track. That'll bring out the caution once again. And guess what? Matt Crafton will get to Aaron's lucky dog now. That battle for position on the racetrack is going to give Matt Crafton one full half mile. And also, it's going to give him time. He's going to have more time now to work his way through those trucks. You saw how hard it was to pass. Matt's probably got a top five truck, but he couldn't get around Ross Chastain back in 14th. He needs that time to be able to work his way through the field. So the fourth caution comes out. Looks as though Matt Crafton is going to get the Aaron's lucky dog. He will be the benefactor this time. And he gets a free pit stop. He knows he's going to have to restart this race from the back of the pack. He knows he can come down pit road. He didn't maybe not want to put his tires on right now, but he want to, may want to make some fine adjustments, try to make that truck a little bit better. He just got tires on the last stop, so I'm with you, Phil. Let's just maybe put a little track bar to it or uh, maybe some wedge, give Matt uh, a cold drink, tell him you're starting in the back anyway, it's time to go through these guys. And right now with 139 laps to go, he probably would get very close to in the window of having enough fuel to run the rest of this race. 27 of Jeb Burton, a little bit vocal on the radio. He's had a little bit of an issue with the 81 of David Starr. Let's listen in. That's what we were talking about. We saw them make contact. I don't know if the contact's going to come right here where he moved him out of the way. You can see Matt Crafton working his way around those trucks. It's much easier when they let you pass them under caution. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to run around the whole field and come back on the back uh, tail end of the lead lap. He's going to pass him on the outside, too. The Aaron's lucky dog and be ready to, to put that battery issue behind him. I'm wondering if that team doesn't think it might be wise to put a see if under caution they could put a battery you know, they, uh, they lost a the lap when they did it before, so they can't really risk losing another one, but they got to be better prepared in case something goes wrong later. One of the unique aspects of this racetrack, train tracks run right off the back stretch.
rough and tumble. That's what they say when you come to Martinsville and almost like a Wild West scene. You've got railroad tracks just behind the racetrack. Those are actually the route of the Roanoke and Southern Railways, which now are the Norfolk Southern. Norfolk. Yeah, that's Norfolk what I'm working Southern. on. Yeah. And uh, those were complete. <laughs> are you are you going off of my pronunciation now? <laughs> Those were completed back in 1891. And that train comes through here normally at about 445 <laughs> in the morning. I thought it was 430. No, normally it's 445. Looks like it's carrying some coal, doesn't it? It does. Point standings through one event. John King having a little bit of an issue here at this racetrack. Maybe not as good as he was to start off the season. This, uh, these point standings are going to get all jumbled up after this race. A lot of guys that had some issues at Daytona are running up toward the front. John King has been able to fight his way and stay on the lead lap. He's back in the 18th spot, so he's surviving, Phil. And I know on this short, tight track, so much different than where he had success at Daytona, that's important to be able yeah, to certainly is. scrape and grab everything you can. We're coming up on halfway. He's been able to stay on the lead lap. I'm impressed with John. Yeah, if he could just come out of here with a top 15, I think he would be just fine. Matt Crafton, he used this pit stop or this this caution flag to come to pit road like we suggested. Did a little bit of work on that truck. How about our next race at Rockingham Speedway in a couple weeks? Can't wait. One of the one of the most fun tracks in NASCAR that I ever drove. Flip and slide, high banks, lots of speed. It's going to be fun to watch these trucks race at Rockingham Speedway. That's April 15th when we return to The Rock. For the good out. Sam Club 200. Yeah, yep. and going to be able to overcome that difficult racing surface. Any anybody from that area needs to come out and support that race. And, uh, and, if, and if, you, if you're not from that area, you can get there. Do it anyway. That's right. Casey Kane's coming all the way from Texas. I'm going to come with him. Rockingham. Rockingham.com <laughs> for your more details on that. And for more details on the two, we go to Ray. Well, thank you, Rick. You know, all of us were quite surprised last year when we found out that Kevin Harvick Incorporated was going to close its doors, one of the most successful programs in the history of Camping World Trucks. Well, most of that equipment got sold to Eddie Sharp and Eddie Sharp Racing. They've got a good run going today with Lofton back in sixth and Kale Gale running in seventh. But the truck that Kevin Harvick is driving today is an RCR entry, but it's actually an old KHI truck. And they had only two teams running full time at RCR, so they needed some equipment. So some of the old Kevin Harvick equipment actually came to Richard Childress Racing. And this is Trassy number 58, one of the last trucks that they built last year. And Ron Hornaday ran this on most of the flat tracks last year with a great deal of success. And Kevin said it is absolutely perfect today. Don't make any more adjustments the rest of the day. We'll put on one more set of tires, but leave it just like it is. The reason why we're continuing under caution, they had to tow the 15 off of the track just moments ago. So as soon as they got that truck behind the wall, now they're letting them know that next time by we'll go back for racing. You know, the thing I loved about Kevin Harvick and his team when it when they announced that they were going out of business, they kept building new trucks. I mean, they would come with new trucks because that's how desperately they wanted to be competitive and they won the owner's championship last year with that two truck. American ethanol Ford called ethanol the fuel from the vegetation and the fuel of the future because it was non toxic and made from waste surplus forward thinker that Ford was uh, HF1. Yes. And Tom T. Hall saying old dogs and children and watermelon wine is my watermelon factory. I appreciate that fact. I also appreciate the fact green flag back in the air. Kevin Harvick in front of Ty Dillon once they cross the strike. James Bush are going to try to run that outside. Now he would love to get a little bit of a, a little bit of grip there and get in front of Ty Dillon. Stay side by side. Ty Dillon has the 17 of Timothy Peters behind him. So no place for Busher to fit in, but he makes a spot. He makes a hole. Now look at him. Three wide coming down the front straightaway. That's Ron Hornaday on the inside of three wide. John West Townley on the outside in the 0 9. Hanging on to it as they go down the back stretch. Now it's two by two. You're just like you're on ice when you're out there on the, on the marbles, that rubber that builds up outside of the two grooves that we run in. Coming up on the halfway point of this race. Again, 250 scheduled laps. We're about to get to 125. Four cautions up to this point. 
Most recently was the 15. Stalled on the front stretch. And now across the stripe. One to go to halfway. Good battle there. There's Miguel Paluto on the inside of Jason Luckler. Nelson Piquet Jr., the 30 truck teammate to Miguel Paluto in the 33 in that battle as well, along with Max Gresham, who's doing a nice job up in the top 15. And Michael, at the beginning of this race, we talked about Nelson Piquet Jr. and how he was so good in practice, but he was relegated back in the 20s. And we said, okay, He's not going to he's not going to end up with a good finishing position because he's going to get lapped early. But he has been able to maintain a consistent run now up into the top 15. Yeah, and he's brought Max Max Gresham along with him as well. Max didn't have a very good day here yesterday. But as this race has unfolded, he's been able to pick up spots racing inside the top 15. That's impressive for both these cats. And certainly good credentials for Max Gresham. He is our reigning k and Pro Series East Division champion. For 2011 and Max is holding off John King and David Rudiman. They're running in 15th and 16th right behind Max. So heavy battling going on behind Max. He's got a little bit of a gap to those guys, but uh, Rudiman has been all over John King. Rudiman ducks to the inside wants wanted to get out of the mirror of John King. Here's Ron Hornaday moves to the inside of Jeb Burton. Ron Hornaday now up to the 22nd spot. Remember he's the first truck one lap down. So he's right now hoping for a caution flag right now. Jeff Burton just behind him. And then that gave him the other half of the race, Phil, to try to drive up through these guys and get a top five finish. I think maybe at this point it would be pretty safe to say Ron can't win this race. You can't come from a lap back and beat Kevin Harvick, can you? Remember when Wait we talked about uh, that's Kevin Harvick now. <laughs> uh, remember last year we talked about Kevin Harvick. He went two laps down, so no way could he finish in the top ten. He gets both laps back and finishes fourth. Well, that, that that's unusual. That yeah, was unusual. Oh, that was Kevin Hart. That was Kevin Hart. He's yes. special. He's amazing here. The Hot Honey's number 13, currently running in the sixth spot, just behind him. Todd Bodine running seven. Look at that speed. These trucks are so fast on this little half miler. They go flying down the front straightaway and have to make that tight left-hand turn. Man, I love this place. Hard on the brakes. I heard a couple drivers talking about having to turn their fans off. That's exactly what you don't want to do to try to keep the bead cool, like we talked about with Joey Coulter melting the bead on his right front tire. You know, it's you get a little bit of a gap, like Johnny Sauter right now has a little bit of gap to Justin Lofton in front of him. You can back off the throttle a little bit easier, not use quite as much brake, but if you do that too often, then the guy behind you is going to stick his nose. In this case, Todd Bodine, he's going to stick his nose out knowing you're backing off a couple car lengths early, truck lengths earlier, and dive to the inside. And you're just looking for a little bit of a brake. You know, you just don't want to use your brake so hard. You want to try to take care of your tires. Next thing you know, the guy behind you, he doesn't have that same agenda, and he's all over your tailgate. Kevin Harvick with a eight-tenth of a second lead over Ty Dillon. They're running some fast laps right now. That last lap Kevin Harvick ran was a 20.57. That's only four tenths of a second off his fastest lap of the race. And we're 133 laps into this race and they have 60 laps on the tires. Harvick, Dillon, Busher, Peters and Lofton. Your top five. Sauter just outside. Coverage of the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series on Speed is brought to you by Ram Trucks. Guts, glory, Ram. And by Sleep In. Dream better here. Book now at sleepin.com. 141 laps in the books, and it has been Kevin Harvick. 142 now, 108 laps to go. Ty Dillon running in the second spot has had a very impressive first showing here in the trucks at Martinsville. Wow. He's had a very impressive start to his trucks career dating back to the couple few races they ran last fall and stepping into this truck at Daytona working his way through what looked like a minefield for him most all night winding up with a top 10 finish and now just steady today started to right up front and stayed right there. While we were at break, this took place. Todd Bodine to the inside of Johnny Sauter. Yeah, Todd had been all over. We talked about Johnny Sauter and Todd Bodine racing. Todd had been all over the back of Johnny Sauter. Finally worked his way to the inside. Todd moved up now to the sixth spot. Good effort here for Todd Bodine and Red Horse Racing. Good start to the season for Red Horse Racing. All having good runs at Daytona. 
Yeah, all three trucks in the top six at Daytona. Now they've got Timothy Peters running fourth here. Todd Bodine in the sixth spot. John King back there in 17th, still on the lead lap. 21 trucks on the lead lap. Ron Hornaday sitting in that lucky dog position, Bill, but he's going to need that caution to come pretty soon because Jake Crum is back in the 21st spot, the last truck a lap down, and he's about, or last truck on the lead lap. He's going to go down a lap here before long. That'll put Ron out of business. He's only about three seconds in front of Kevin Hart. You see Jason Larkler right there. He's pretty, pretty ho-hum day so far. Started 12th right now, running 13th. Running right behind the 32 of Miguel Paluto. And there comes Max Gresh, and we talked about Max. He's just getting better and better, and he's about to drive up on this battle here for the third 12th spot between Paluto and Leffler. Another rear end gear, yeah. looks like. Another rear end gear is going to be burned up, looks like Ryan Seeks. You got the fire underneath the truck. That's why the safety crews are there. That's how hot that grease gets. Right there by the exhaust as well. So a lot of heat generated on the right side of those trucks. They're going to have to stay right there because that, that'll flare up again. That grease as it leaks out. You burn a gear up and then the parts start galling together and then, it, and then it breaks something in the case and that grease will pour out. Miguel Pluto just in front of Jason Leffler. Max Gresham behind them. That Dollar General truck owned by Kyle Busch Motorsports. About 100 laps to go right now, Michael. We talked about the fact that if Ron Hornady was able to get his lap back, get the lucky dog if the caution will come out, he would have 100 laps. But as every lap ticks by, he has a little bit more of a sense of urgency because you mentioned it's safe to say that he's probably not going to be able to win this race because he's a lap down 100 laps to go, even though he's going to, you know, even though he gets it a lap back. Ron Hornaday was running fourth when he turned coming out of turn number four and so that relegated him back he came onto pit road they made a stop put him back in the back in the 20s then he lost that battery lost wound up losing a lap and it's been it's been quite a the day that started off with a with a real good look to it for Ron has been downhill ever since a little bit of promise early on in qualifying after qualifying fifth yeah, tough day for the 39 as well. Monday night, head to the center of NASCAR country with NASCAR Race Hub. Tune in as we recap the beating and banging for Martinsville. Plus, catch up on the latest breaking NASCAR news. NASCAR Race Hub Monday at 6 and 11 Eastern, only on speed. Fifth caution has come out this time. It is for veteran David Starr, the right rear tire down on that truck. He was around in turn two. We had noticed that he was free falling. A lot of trucks have been able to get by him. You can see right now that right rear is down. Almost flight. He does a nice job keeping that truck out of the outside wall. Unfortunately, he lost a lap. And uh, that's his unfortunate and it's good fortune for Ron Hornaday. We talked about him needing to get that caution pretty soon because Jake Crum was about to lose a lap and that would have put Ron out of the lucky dog spot. He got that caution. He can come to pit road, work on his truck and be back on the lead lap. Aaron's giving uh, Ron Hornaday that lucky dog. We'll have to start from the tail end though because of getting the lucky dog, but that's a whole lot better than being a lap down. Here comes race leader Kevin Harvick. It looks as though tire management's coming into play as we have 91 laps to go, and the trucks are making their way onto pit road, Hermie. Yeah, Johnny Salter's coming to pit road in the 13 truck. A little bit of a brake issue, not the braking he would like. His truck's been a little bit tight in the center. They're going to take four tires to no go fuel. Also, James Busher, his truck has also been tight in the center, but really fight forward, might as well. They'll also take four tires, one pound, out of the right rear. Ray? Hermie, at the top of your screen, you see that Bass Pro Shop Chevrolet. Ty Dillon said it's perfect. Leave it just like it is. And Scott Nass and his crew chief wanted to go with two tires. They wanted left sides, but Richard Childress says you can't win with that. You got to get four. Here goes Harvick with four, and they're going to go back on the change of their track bar. They had dropped it last time. They'll raise it back up, put his truck where it was. The two will be first off pit road, then Dillon, then Busher. Good news for Kevin Harvick. His teammate comes off pit road, so they will have the same plan when they get ready to restart this race. It's it's great news for Ty Dillon because he's going to get that second spot without having to fight for it with James Busher. Todd Bodine makes it up into the top five. Tired. An issue there. Hot, hot, hot.
Tom. Green flag just came out. The truck's rocketing down the backstretch here at Martinsville, and it was the same as the other five starts we have seen today. Ty Dillon on the inside, Harvick on the outside. Dillon allowing Harvick to take the spot up in front and falling right in behind that three of Austin Dillon, normally James Busher. This time it's Justin Lofton that's got that spot. Great strong run by Justin Lofton all day long. Just solid after after that third place run at Daytona a few weeks ago. And the way he ended 2011, I just love what I saw from Lofton and that team, and it's continuing today. He's fast. Riding along there with Johnny Sauter momentarily as we see that 08 of Ross Chastain trying to run the outside line. Yep. Gill on the inside. Picking two tires with Ross Chastain probably to get him up in the top 10. Yeah, and that kid's a competitor though, Phil. You give him a little bit of track position, he knows how to drive the heck out of that watermelon truck. Slides in behind Kale Gill. Kale Gill is another one of those trucks that Reem Chevrolet with a solid run. Up in the top 10 all race long. Yep. Very solid, and that's a good sign for a new new combination like those guys have going on. You can run up front in the top ten here at Martinsville, Phil. I'm gonna, gonna do it anywhere. I'm gonna bet you can do it anywhere all year long. Ray, what's happening with the tire issue? Well, I'll tell you, Rick, what I've seen down here is the left rears really seem to be going away a lot on these trucks. Our first uh, uh, last set of pit stops was at 78. We came in there at 160. So that means those guys went about 80 laps on those tires. Well, if this is their last tire change, that means we're going to have to run 90. So a lot of these guys are going to be slipping inside. And what I've seen is left side seem to be wearing a lot more than the rights. That's a great point. They're going to have to run a little bit farther on this set of tires than they did the last set. Look at this battlefield. David Rudman and Jeff Burton have been all over one another. Burton's making it work on the outside. And uh, Ron Hornaday's watching, watching on. And I'm sure he's been entertained by them those two but they've worked it out I didn't know they'd be able to get bumper to bumper without one of them being backwards beforehand Ron Hornady now is back up in the lead lap he knows that he needs to pick these spots up as quick as he can there's Matt Crafton working his way around Max Gresham that put Matt's up puts Matt up to the 15th spot Matt hadn't made a run through him like he had hoped once he got his Aaron's lucky dog he's only three trucks ahead of Hornaday he got in his I think maybe he's got issues. Yeah, we thought. Crafton saying just shut off. Just may go back to that battery issue. And again, probably is led by the alternator or caused by the alternator. See, at least his telemetry is working properly. See him down to about 4,500 RPMs in the center of the corner, lowest RPMs, then up, upwards of 8,500. There's 85 is exactly what he saw on the backstretch. What would you guess, Phil? Down to around 70? 60, 50 miles an hour in the center of the turn and up to 120 or 30? I'd say something like that, exactly. Can you imagine that in a pickup truck? In a, oh. what, and how long are these straightaways? 800, <laughs> 800 feet. feet. So you go from about 50 miles an hour, 55 miles an hour, up to 120 in a space of, of, of that distance? I'm going to bet your pickup truck at home won't do that. <laughs> Absolutely four, not. Four bow ties, the top four trucks right now. Harvick, Dillon, Lofton, and Busher. We talked a little bit about Justin Lofton. A very good run for him here at Martinsville as he's holding on to that third spot. And look at how these leaders have been able to keep pace with Kevin Harvick. Early in the race, he put a straightaway on these guys. Now it seems like the adjustments that the, the three of Ty Dillon and the six of Justin Lofton, those crews have made, have given them the speed to stay with Kevin. Last couple laps, Ty Dillon has actually been a little bit quicker than Kevin Harvick, just a couple hundredths of a second, but nonetheless, a little bit quicker. If you're Ty Dillon, what are you learning right now from a veteran like Kevin Harvick to figure out how you win this race? He's put so much in the bank today as far as knowledge, the restarts, how Kevin likes to work with you if you have a fast truck. He's also been able to watch his line and see where Kevin's breaking and letting off. And the closer he can stay to him, Phil, the more he's going to learn. One thing I've, been, I've noticed for Ty, as we see these trucks, and we saw it during qualifying where you, the front end is really raised up as they go down the straightaway and they get down to the corner. A lot of trucks slam to the ground. Look how gradually Ty's truck came to the ground. That's He's not slamming on the brakes. That's a combination of him knowing how to control his truck and his team putting a good setup under him. A great lesson being given to quite a few drivers today by Kevin Harvick. Welcome back. It's Kevin Harvick still out in front of Ty Dillon. 
Then it's Justin Lofton, James Busher, Timothy Peters, Todd Bodine, Johnny Sauter back there in the seventh spot. And even though running in the top 10, he is still not happy with his truck, and he, well, he let his crew know about it. Listen. Garbage put it on the trailer running seven a little, little bit of contact right there He lets Todd know that he's behind him now He's gonna move the inside thinking that Todd may let him have that spot. We heard from Johnny just a moment ago that uh, That he, he had warned Todd all he's gonna warn him. This is a slippery slope right here now Johnny got in the back of Todd a couple times Johnny is out of there though. <laughs> he's faster than Todd. All one turn is all you need. One and a half. All you need is one good turn to get away from a guy that you're rough up, and he's gonna forget it after after that. He might as well forget it. Yeah, you, Todd, mean, you mean Todd Bodine's gonna forget that? He, he might as well. <laughs> <laughs> At least for the time being. At least for the time being. Okay. I know you drivers. You don't forget anything. Right now, Todd will be a little bit have a little bit of concern for Kale Gale behind him. Remember, we saw before the caution flag, Todd get by Johnny Sauter. Obviously, Joe Shear and his guys made a, made some adjustments, made that 13 truck a little bit better. Parker Kligerman just in front of Jason Leffler. Kligerman running 11th, Leffler 12th. Ross Chastain has been able to jump up into the top 10 or stay in the top 10 after some pit strategy. Yeah, he's been running strongly just ahead of these two. And another driver that's also has broken into the top 10, Nelson PK Jr. We talked about him and how he would have to work his way up, and he has done exactly that. All over the back of the 33 of Kale Gale. I've been very impressed with Nelson PK Jr. After the Daytona race, he actually ran a Canaan Pro Series race and won that race. At Bristol, did a nice job. Had a great spirited battle with Ryan Blaney, Dave's son, mm -hmm. towards the end of that race. Held him off on a green white checker finish. We'll have a lot of KN Pro Series action on speed throughout the course of the year, both east and west. Mm -hmm. See Parker Kligerman moving to the inside of the 99 of Brian Silas. Travis Pastrana has joined that race for the championship in the East Series field, seeing what he can do over here in the stock car world. So I think it's cool for NASCAR to have Travis on board. What did Travis think about Bristol? Um, he didn't think that uh, he would get dizzy, and he found <laughs> out really fast that he did. He jumps over stuff and goes through stuff. I, he said, how tough can it be? He called me afterwards. He said, I don't know how y'all do that. But he's learning. He's having fun and part of the NASCAR landscape. I love all the, the energy we have around the sport, whether it's from um, Natalie Sather, who was here this right. weekend, all the diversity drivers that are joining us. Got a lot of good things going on. A lot of good things going on for Kevin Harvick. They continue here at Martinsville. You know, Joe Rutman won the first ever NASCAR Camping World Truck Series race at Martinsville Speedway on September 25th, 1995. Our American Ethanol Fast Fact. Led only two laps in that race. Last two laps, I think he was able to get by Jeff Bodine. And uh, Mike Skinner finished second in that race. You know, that's Troy Ruffin, the Indy 500 winner's brother, Joe. Did really? you know that? Yeah. We're always wanting to give important facts out there. Michael, have you got another important fact? Yeah, Tracy Bird sang the watermelon crawl. There you go. Another important watermelon fact. We're going ethanol and watermelon. watermelon. You don't think you could make ethanol with watermelon. That's corn, right? Well, 92% of watermelon is water. That's not going to work. No. Johnny Sauter. Moves up into the top five. All over the back of this college complete Chevrolet of Justin Lofton. Justin had such a strong run this entire race. I bet that team's glad they didn't just put it on the trailer. He's racing for a top five finish <laughs> now. That's how you win a championship. You take a truck that you don't think is worthy of, of even being in the race and running in the top five with it. That's a pretty major accomplishment. You know, that audio we had, Michael, was before this last round of pit stops. I think Joe, Joe Shear tuned him up a little bit. What do you think? Yeah, that's some good pit work. And, you know, you only get a couple of stabs at it, Phil. You come to pit road. Like I said, you want to do something you can do quickly, too. You have to do it almost with air pressure, maybe a turn on the track bar, but that's it. You can't be pulling rubbers and putting rubbers in the right rear springs to change their rate because it just takes too long. It takes too much time on pit road to lose too many spots. Let's take a closer look at our top ten. We'll go through the field. We start with Ray. Well, we'll start out with Kevin Harvick. He's got two wins here at Martinsville, and both of those have come in the spring race. He has run a number of times in the fall, 
And the bad news for the competition is he'll be back in this number two truck when we come here in the fall again this year. Austin Dillon handed over the reins to his younger brother, Ty, and he is picking up right where that three truck was a year ago. Dillon running second, even though they weren't very good in practice, and he is learning a lot from watching the line that he has watched Kevin Harvick run around this Martinsville Speedway. Now let's check in on the 31 with Hermie. Well, Ray, Jay Bush has had a really solid day on the racetrack and on pit road. Solid pit stop. His truck is still a little bit tight, but they're still working on it. He's got what he's got for right now. The best it's been all day. They're hoping to settle in and get him a top 10, top 10 finish out of this day. Now, Johnny Sauter, we've heard him talking on the radio. He wanted to put this thing on the truck. Well, as you said, glad he's not. He's the best he's been all day. A little bit loose on the exit of the corner for right now for Johnny Sauter. Justin Laughlin as well has been solid all day long. Same trouble as basically James Busher, tight through the center, but they've been afraid to free it up too much in the center because it hurts his forward fight. So Justin Laughlin right now holding on to a top five position. Ray? Timothy Peters in that number 17 back in sixth spot right now. He started third today, but they've had to make a lot of adjustments on the pit stops. The last two times that he's come in, they've lost a couple of spots in the pits because of all the things they were trying to do to make the changes on the truck. And Todd Bodine runs in seventh, right, Hermie? Yes, right, Todd Bodine in seventh position right now. Had a pretty good day. On a long run, he loses forward bite in this 11 Toyota. So they don't have it perfect, but Todd Bodine still looking for that first ever short track victory. He's got to get a little more forward bite to get it done, right? Gale Gale had the thrill of his life winning in the ARCA series at Mobile Speedway, his hometown. The place went crazy after that victory, and he said he's been carrying that momentum with him for sure. But today, all the changes they've made on that number 33 have actually made it worse. He said they just cannot get up off of the corner. He is struggling to steer that thing all throughout the day today. How about the Nelson PK truck who's running ninth? Well, he just got up to that ninth position, Ray, and he's holding on to a loose truck. Has been since the last time they were on pit road, but he's not as bad off of turn two, but off of turn four, cannot get the forward bike, which makes it difficult to pass trucks on this racetrack. Jason Leffler, another driver, really needing a good run. They got really tight on the run before last, but made some improvements to the 18 on this run, and he's driving his way back up into the top 10 is Jason Leffler. Great job, guys, getting us through the top 10. Again, Harvick out in front. He's got about a one and a half second lead over Ty Dillon, who's been running second pretty much the whole race. You know what the guys were talking about is what these truck drivers would like to change on their trucks. They've got what they've got right now. We're only, you know, 36 laps from the end of this race. You cannot give up the track position and come to pit road. Even if the caution were to come out right now, I don't think that any of the trucks up in the top seven or eight positions can stop, can they? They're not coming. Hard to catch Kevin Harvick as he runs away from the field. Tomorrow, immediately following the cup race from right here in Martinsville, turn to speed for NASCAR Victory Lane. Celebrate with the winner and get the ultimate race recap from Martinsville. NASCAR Victory Lane after the race right here on speed. Problems for the 11 of Todd Bodine. The right front tire goes down on that truck. Looks like it's got the sway bar too, Phil. You see the left front of that truck up in the air? He probably ground the sway bar wow. off when that tire blew out right there. Did you see that? pressure from that yeah now it's now a sway bar is broke as you mentioned so he's just gonna have to limp around here the rest of the race everybody does a nice job avoiding him when that tire went down watch this truck when he goes down to the corner though the car the trucks are set up predominantly with that front sway bar the way the whole setup works is because that bar ties it down you take it off you can't drive the thing even a short racetrack like this it's a huge sway bar way bigger than we used to run back in the day I thought someone was putting an axle in there the first time I saw somebody put a sway bar in these days. Ray, what's going on with the 18 team? Well, Ross Chastain in the 08 is running 10th, and he's right behind Leffler, and he said his windshield is absolutely covered, so there is apparently some kind of fluid coming out of that Dollar General Toyota. Chastain said, I got to drop way back or I'm not even going to be able to see, so we need to keep our eye on it. And a good bit of damage on the front end there. Looks like Jason may have gotten into a few people. And over in turn two, we just saw the 22 of Joey Coulter get way high up 
up on the racetrack. Yeah, Joey Coulter almost into the wall coming out of turn number two. He Another lost right a front yeah. tire there, so could be interesting to see how this thing lines up here with just 25 laps to go. Can these guys make it to the end on these right front tires? Caution comes out, so we will have a reset point. Everyone will be able to catch their breath. David Rudeman in the 92, the right front tire down on that truck as well. I think we found out how long the right front tires <laughs> were going to last here. What do you think? And again, it's it's not an indictment on Goodyear. We've got a lot of brake heat right. here, a lot of bead temperature. But we saw three right front tires go down within, within the space of about five laps. Todd Bodine in the 11, he had a tire issue. Then you see the 22 of Joey Coulter, also a tire issue. That didn't bring the caution out until the 92 of David Rudeman also with a tire issue. Yeah, Joey Coulter's second flat right front tire was far enough around in the corner he was able to get that truck stopped. The other one happened right when he loaded up that right front tire going in turn number three. That's when he made contact with the outside wall. You see pit road open. None of the leaders are coming. No, and that, that's, make, that's probably making Ty Dillon wonder. You've got to think those trucks are set up somewhat similar. Ty Dillon wonder, is my right front tire going to make it to the end? How about Kevin Harvick? And Kevin Harvick as well. It's true. Well, Kevin Harvick, being a veteran at this racetrack, probably knows how to manage his brakes. Ty Dillon might not be running the same way as Kevin Harvick is, so there might be a little question mark in Ty Dillon's head. He's been running a pretty smart race. We, you know, we watched him. We watched that thing not slamming down, him jamming mm -hmm. on the brakes that hard, and I'm sure he's been coached, too. They know that we've lost some right front tires, so they, he's been coached to ease up on those brakes. Inside of 22 laps to go, pop, pop. Probably talking to Ty Dillon right now on that radio. Just for men, Auto Stop. Here is today's fastest pit stop presented by Auto Stop. This was back on lap 160. Kevin Harvick coming in as your leader. Pretty flawless all day long on pit road as well as on the racetrack for Kevin Harvick. Just for men, Auto Stop, this team has been automatic. They come in in first and left in first. So great job all around for this whole organization today. Led all but four laps in this race, and uh, two of those laps were when he let the three go by, and the other two were when the 18 uh, was able to lead. Actually, the 18 did not lead. Right. It was just that information, just that one time with Ty yep. Dillon. When he opted to allow Ty Dillon to go around. So that's the only time that anyone has been out front other than Kevin Harvick. And look at this the left front control arm, it looked like they were up under, uh, they opened the hood, it was broke on that truck. You see the spindle and the spindle and all that uh, brake caliper and the brake rotor. They all took that off so they can replace that upper control arm, but that's pretty much going to end his day. He may get back on the racetrack, but he's going to finish at the very low end of the 20s. Yeah, only, only 18 laps remaining. Watch up here. Watch up here. That's the area that he's, he's going to reach in there, grab that upper control arm. It should be fastened to the frame. And he, re he, he reached up in there and grabbed that thing. Quickly saw that there was serious damage and had to get that, that truck behind the wall. So after running in the fourth spot, the caution comes out. Johnny Sauter stops on pit road. And they see after lifting the hood that he has major damage. Guys up front, a little communication between the two. At 31 and 6, and this guy's going to get really hard right and bumpy and all. Just be on your toes here. Kevin, work with them. Hey, I ain't worried about anybody behind me, all right? Folks, stop for us. Don't care about this. Okay, 10 4. Now, I said the two were talking, communicating. They can't talk to each other, but they're talking through Richard Childress right now. And you know what I am concerned a little bit about is if Austin, or excuse me, if Ty Dillon lets Harvick jump, can Busher get a run to the inside and make it three wide? We'll see. Because he doesn't go right when Kevin does. It might give James a chance. He's going to try. Wide. He's going to try. There. 15 laps remaining. He got in the back of Ty Dillon, pushed him up the racetrack. That puts Busher down to the inside now. Ty drives it hard down in turn number three. Let's see if he can stay on the bottom. He does. Oh, we got a trouble behind. And around in turn Reckon four, behind, yeah. Max Gresham no in the 24 no is caution, around. No caution. The caution hasn't come out yet. Got a call. No there it is now. Caution. Jeff Burton caught up in this as well. What a, a Newberry with a tremendous amount of damage. It worked his way back on the lead lap. Got a lucky dog. 
That start went crazy, just like I expected it would. And what Ty did was when he got to turn one, he just went in there so deep because he didn't get the start that he wanted. He slid up the hill. That gave the, the edge to Busher on the inside. But, man, what a great job Ty Dillon did when he got down to turn three. He dove that thing in there hard, like you said, Phil. He made it stick. I thought he'd go sliding up again. I thought there may have been a little contact down in turn number one, Michael. You don't think so? You don't think he had any help being shoved to the outside? I think he just drove down in there because he knew he needed to make up some ground. James was all over the back of him. They might have gotten together. I couldn't really tell, but I don't think so. That's turn three. This is the issue. Gresham in the 24 around. You see the 32 sideways, but able to straighten back out. That's the Miguel Paluto. There might have been contact between Miguel Paluto and the 32 and the 24 at Max Gresham. Let's see what happens when they, you see it's just stacked up there. They're all into each other. It looks like maybe Miguel Paluto may have got into Max Gresham just a little bit, but he was being pushed from behind by John King, and he was being pushed from behind as well. Yeah, Parker, Parker Kligerman, I Parker think. Parker Kligerman has front-end damage, and he had just been on pit road. Watch these guys all try to Pretty good up here get in the there. same space. Up, wow, right John was Conley, go, 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 go low now, go to the middle. Paul Hirock, I believe, in the Holly no, 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 Look at all the damage no, no, to the 14 of Brennan Newberry. Now you see on these restarts, James Busher knows that Ty Dillon is going to let Harvick go. So he's got a good jump here. Gets a jump, looks to the inside. See if there's any contact here, Michael. Huh? Uh, maybe a little bit. Might have been a little bit, but Ty looked like he got a little bit loose, whether that was from contact, or as you mentioned, trying to drive in there so hard to, to keep Busher behind him. Watch him go in this corner, though, deep in the turn, and he makes it work. Take a look at this. That was the nine of Ron Hornaday. He was not in position. Now, this is on the initial restart here. And he's been posted to come to pit road. So we're going to stay him. right here. That wreck's going to happen right in front of him. Max Gresham has two trucks in front of him. See him get all stacked up there. There's Paluto. Oh, and Jeff just couldn't get that truck turned to get his way underneath Gresham and the cost. Cost Jeb. Look at the smoke on Paluto's truck. Yep. Is that left front tire Yeah, down? left front tire's down. Ron Hornaday will have to restart this race from the tail end, and we will have probably inside of 10 laps to yep. go yep. when we restart this race. Paluto got turned around and then was corrected by the same truck. We saw that happen earlier where the truck got sideways and then straightened back out once again. But you see the damage to the, the left front tire and a lot of damage to the 29 of Parker Kligerman. Just a chain reaction. And the farther back you go, the worse it usually gets. You give these race drivers any advantage at all, and they're going to they're going to use it. And that's what Busher did on that start. He knew Ty wasn't going, so he jumped. He's got that same knowledge now, Phil. Ty's not going to beat the 20, the two truck of Kevin Harvick down into turn one. So that means there's a window of opportunity. And all you need is just a little window, and you're going to cram your nose in there and try to open it. So I think right now it's up to Ty Dillon to alter his restart a little bit. So maybe let Kevin Harvick go earlier and then try to keep that 31 behind him. But James Bush is thinking the same thing. I know what he's going to do, and I'm going to get him this time. Closing in on inside of 10 laps of racing to go for the trucks at Martinsville. The NASCAR Camping World Truck Series on Speed is brought to you by Camping World in Good Sam. Everything for the RV lifestyle, including RVs, accessories, warranties, insurance, and roadside assistance. And by Toyota Auto Care. Those of you tuning in for the Rolex Sports Car Series, that will follow us immediately after this race is over. I would say stay tuned for that because those guys like to beat and bang about like these truck drivers yeah. do. Yeah. You want action, you got it right here on speed. It could be. They did crazy. it for 24 hours in Daytona. <laughs> it, it might be almost as crazy as what this one has been like. Ray, what's going on with that 33? Well, they just had to pit for a flat tire, and I just looked at the tire. They ran over a big piece of debris, but Cale Gale's going to give up a top 10. I think he was running sixth when he came to the pits. Pace and truck has made its way onto pit road when they come back by the stripes. Six laps of racing to go. Ty Dillon on the inside. Kevin Harvick on the outside. Green flag back in the air. Watch Busher now. Watch Busher. Ty did a great job staying right next to Harvick. Who often gets shoved up the hill. There's may lose a spot to Timothy Peters. Now he gets back in line. 
Look at how deep Ty Dillon drives into turn three. Gets that truck stopped, aims it the other way. Great start by our front row. This time by five laps of racing to go. Kevin Harvick has only has led all but two laps of this race. If he leads the remaining laps, he will have led 248 laps. That will be more than any other driver has ever led in the history of the Camping World Truck Series. See a little bit of contact back there, J.R. Fitzpatrick, Miguel Paluto making contact. Not when you start pushing and shoving here inside of 10 laps to go. This thing has a green white checkered written all over it, the way these guys are aggressively running each other. Our top 10 got all jumbled up with that spin down in turn four. Nelson PK working to the inside of that 08, trying to get by Ross Chastain. Looks like he's going to make the pass. Ross gets back in line in front of Jason White. Now Kligerman moves to the inside of John King. No room there that time. Next time by two laps of racing from Martinsville. A great run by Nelson PK Jr. He's up to the seventh spot. Very impressive performances out of Kevin Harvick, Ty Dillon, James Busher, Justin Lofton, Timothy Peters, all running in the top five. Now what Kevin Harvick hopes is they can get back to the start finish line to take the white flag. If they take the white flag before something happens, that will be the last lap. Coming out of turn four, Kevin Harvick sees the white flag, takes the white flag a half a mile to go at Martinsville. Clean so far on this last lap. Harvick down the back stretch. Ty Dillon, 10 truck links behind him. Coming through three and four, the dominant truck, a record breaker. Kevin Harvick leads 248 laps of this win. What a dominant performance by that RCR team there, Kevin Harvick. We, uh, we must admit we saw this one coming. Good job, guys. Great job, Kevin Marcus. How about that win, buddy? Congratulations. This is the 14th win for Kevin Harvick. He has won four polls, and all four times he has went on to win the race. He's, he's predictable. <laughs> he starts first and finishes first. This, this is the most dominant performance we've seen out of him or anybody in the history of the, of the series, leading 248 of of 50 laps. Kevin's going to celebrate on the racetrack. Let's go to the pit stall with Ray Dunlap. Well, let's talk to his crew chief, Marcus Richmond. When you guys got into the first practice, you ran eight laps. He said, put her on jack stands. It was about perfect. You had her on rails today. Congratulations. I appreciate it, man. I want to dedicate this win to Frank Allen. He was a hard worker on the two truck. I just, uh, this Ty Chevrolet was awesome off the trailer, man. It's just unreal. Um, this, this whole group, the 22, everybody worked together. All of our setup was very close. Um, I just want to thank everybody at RCR for the opportunity. And, man, well, Kevin Harvick, you, you better win. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. I think there's more of those coming this year, guys. What a dominant performance by Kevin Harvick. In all of RCR, we had Ty Dillon, who had never been here in the truck, obviously, only what four starts previously in his career in truck series and comes here and finishes second on a very difficult racetrack and there he is right there. Ty Dillon climbing out of that number three truck. Hornaday has been asked to go visit Wayne Otten, the series director. He's been told to. He has been told to, that is correct. I think Ron was upset with somebody. He may go up here and find him right here. I don't know where he's going. He's just going to the front of the line there. Charging up, and they're telling him to slow down, and right by that official. It's been a tough week for the Hornaday family. Again, Lindy losing her mother earlier this week, Ron's wife, and so now Ron, with the little frustrations after the short track run here, will go visit with series director Wayne Otten. And he may not have been mad at anybody. Right. He may have just been upset with the day he had here. He's being shown finishing 16th, and that's uh, very un-Ron Hornaday-like. Great run for the 31 of James Busher. He's standing by with Hermie. Well, James Busher, good solid run for you guys. Good on the racetrack, solid in the pits. Tell us about your day. Uh, it definitely was a, a solid day for us. Uh, all the guys at Turner Motorsports did a great job building this truck. Uh, we did a lot of testing, myself and my teammates, uh, a few weeks back and, and we thought it was going to help us a lot and I think it did but what we showed up with wasn't the package we needed we were really bad in the first practice and uh, you know the guys stuck with me we, we worked and worked to, to get the truck good and it was fast in the second practice 
Um, no, it wasn't there on the on the scoring monitor because because we didn't have a very good qualifying lap, and uh, we got lucky with qualifying today, qualifying with some shade and, and the track heating up. So, uh, you know, it was a good good clean day for us. I've never had a, a, such an uneventful Martinsville. So, uh, you know, it, it was a good day. We we started in the top ten and just worked forward all day long, and uh, just a little little dent in the grill, and uh, we'll bring it back next time. That's James Busher. He comes home third. Ray, you're in victory lane. Yeah, and here comes Kevin Harvick, and I have a feeling there's going to be a few Budweiser's flying in the air. Yep. Some Tide on top of the car truck. Tide Chevrolet, Kevin, was on rails. I have a feeling the driver had a good bit to do with that, but from the very first practice, you guys looked like you were the truck to beat. Yeah, I just I want to thank everybody from Kroger and Tide, um, Ream, everybody who's a part of this program for uh, for being a part of it. Brendan, South Point, um, I, these guys just did a great job preparing for this race and coming here. And uh, the truck was good right off the trailer. And um, what else can you say? It just I told Richard when he leaned in the window, I said, "Why did I ever start race teams? Can you imagine how many wins we'd have had if we'd never done that?" So, but it's um, it's a lot of fun. These guys are all a lot of fun. I felt like dad there with with uh, Ty and, and those guys, and uh, it's great to see everybody working together. You're talking about a big picture of building a team here and being part of helping, too. Well, you know, I, I kind of feel responsible for uh, for Austin and, 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 and Ty at least, at least helping them get to, to where they want to be, and that's in cup, and it all starts in the truck series and nationwide series, and they're both really good and, and fun to be around. Another grandfather clock, Kevin Harvick, the dominant truck today, the Tide Chevrolet sits in victory lane once again here at Martinsville. That is the third win for Kevin Harvick here at Martinsville, tying Dennis Setzer and Mike Skinner for the most wins at this famous track. The Kroger 250 goes to Kevin Harvick. In two weeks, the Rock is back. After an eight-year hiatus, NASCAR makes its return to Rockingham Speedway with the Camping World Truck Series. It's the inaugural race for the trucks in Rockingham, and everybody will be looking to get their name in the record books. Who will be the first truck winner at The Rock? Tune in to find out. Chris Devoto hosts the setup starting at 12.30 p.m. Eastern, followed by flag-to-flag -flag coverage, only on speed. And for more information on that Rockingham race, RockinghamSpeedway.com has all of your information. The Kroger 250 in the books now. Kevin Harvick ends up in victory lane. The guy who was close, oh, so close all the time, Ty Dillon, was uh, finished in second and led two of the 250 laps, and he's standing by with Hermie. Well, Ty Dillon, you qualified second. Finish second overall, a good solid day for you guys. Definitely. Um, the way yesterday went, we struggled all day, but these guys are awesome. They worked hard. Flash and I stayed up all night. Didn't get much sleep because we just went that good, and we showed up in qualifying, put her second and raced second all day. The pit stops were awesome. Uh, can't thank Bass Pro, Chevy, Tag Hoyer, everybody involved on this team. It's it's an awesome day, and I, I'm so excited to get this year going. I think we got a championship team. I'm really excited. And talk about the cooperation between you and your teammate Kevin Harvick on the restart. It's worked out good for both of you guys. Yeah, that was uh, logically the best way for both of us to get out front. But there at the end, it got a little hairy. I don't know if my rear tires are the last two restarts, if they even touch the ground uh, through, through one and two. So it was a little scary, but it worked out all right and uh, take second place on my first Martinsville. That's rookie Ty Dillon. He qualifies second, finished second. Pretty good day for the rookie. Yeah, impressive day. And talked about the big picture and a championship team. Want to look at the point standings after two races. Those guys are right in the hunt. Look at who our point leader is. Our winner from Daytona came out with a ninth place finish today. That's not a feature win, number four for John King, but man, he struggled early, got a top 10 leading the points. That's a great accomplishment. I'll guarantee you asked John King if he would take a ninth place finish before he came here, and he said, heck yes. <laughs> Jason White's another cat that was. Uh, in the back most of the day, fought his way to a top 10 finish. Great run for Jason White. All these guys on this page are championship contenders for sure. The Ford unofficial point standings has Nelson PK Jr. in eighth. What a great run for him. Again, those are your point standings, and Nelson PK Jr. ended up in the sixth spot. We take a look at our unofficial results of this race. Again, Harvick, Dillon, 
Busher, Lofton, and Peters were your top five. Some great stories here in the top ten. As you mentioned, Nelson Piquet Jr. How about Ross Chastain with a seventh place finish? Leffler soldiers onto a top ten. John King and Jason White round out the top ten. Jason White and John King were partners most all this day, and they wound up partners in the top ten. Just outside the top ten in 11th, Parker Kligerman, Jared Fitzpatrick, Jeff Burton in his first ever start finishes up in the 13th spot. Let's go back down to Hermick. Justin Lofton brings this 80 shot racing truck on with the top five. Fourth place today at Martinsville. This last couple restarts looked they were quite exciting. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, I don't know if Kevin was. Uh, was kind of blocking, helping the three out or what, but I tried to push him into the in the turn one on that last restart to hopefully get enough room to get around, get around Dylan, maybe, you know, challenge him for the win. But awesome day for the uh, collegecomplete.com Chevy. Uh, you know, our guys in the pits were, were tremendous. Every every pit stop, we picked up a couple spots, and it really helped out. It makes things a lot easier. So uh, great day and looking forward to going to Rockingham next week. That's uh, Justin Laughlin. He comes on with a fourth-place finish. Yeah, fourth place finish after Thank the you. third yeah. place finish at Daytona. So a very impressive two races for Justin Lofton, but a great run for Kevin Harvick. Congratulations, Kroger 250 winner.